Hello guys, welcome to Space Pirates and Zombies 2, also known as Spars 2. Don't let the title fool you, it's not a gimmicky game, it's a very good game, the first one was at least. And I will take a look at the second one. It's coming to uh, Steam Early Access on May 19th. It has multiplayer but it's not implemented yet. And if you take a look at the credits, the game is developed by a two-man team, Andrew Hume and Richard Clifford. And they developed it over an almost four year period subsisting on the earnings that they made from Sparse 1. So they put in the hard blood in this game and it shows it's a very polished game, especially for a two-man team. And it's great looking to boot and they overhauled many of the systems that you might remember if you played the first game. Now it plays a little bit like a 4X game where you control a mothership, explore the universe and build your faction. There are two modes to play. You can play the campaign, it's uh, about 12 hours long, and it'll teach you all of the basic game mechanics. Or you can play the sandbox mode, and just generate a universe and explore it, and see if you can survive the infection. So let's start a new campaign. There's a difficulty slider, we'll play on normal. It should be noted that currently we use computer synthesized voices for the main cast. We plan to replace them with real voice work at some point in the near future. If you don't like these voices, you can disable them now or at any time in the sound options menu. I've already played with the voices enabled, uh, the synthesized voices, and they do not sound that great. So we'll tick them off and play without them. And hopefully full voice acting will be added to the game soon. If my voice sounds a little hoarse, it's because I've been sick the last six days. But hopefully we'll get through all of the text here just fine. Element 126, res and res. It was the answer to everything. A transmutable element with the power to unlock the secrets of the universe. It gifted humanity everything there was to know about space time and how to enslave it. Res triggered an explosion of technological advancement. Mankind spread to the far reaches of the galaxy, growing exponentially in numbers. Along with the reliance on Res, the United Terran Alliance was founded to control the countless population. Eventually, they sought to ration the use of Res. As Res supplies thinned, conflict arose, an epidemic of fortune seeking miners forced their way to the galactic core where resin was most abundant. Eventually the primary res source was discovered, all res stemmed from a sinister and timeless energy being, a being awakened by the use of res. They had sprung an ancient and recursive trap, res being the bait no budding civilization could possibly ignore. Corruption spilled outward into the stars, twisting the biological matrix of all it touched, integrating it into machines. Mankind's own technology, their own dead, had begun to turn against them. For years they struggled to survive against a flood of abominated metal and flesh. Billions were lost to the infection, only further feeding the expanding corruption. In spite of hopeless obliteration, the very fabric of life itself arose to fight the dark entity. As a race, humanity came together for a single purpose. In some twisted way, they had found peace. Peace, however, does not last. People fell back into their self-minded ways. Humanity turned inward in a scramble for the remaining res, which now could no longer be renewed. As the UTA lost its control over the galaxy, they collapsed the entire warp gate network beyond any hope of salvage. Human ingenuity, it turns out, knows no captivity. Out of need, a resin-based drive was developed, allowing more direct travel anywhere in the galaxy. The Void was reborn as a wild, untapped and lawless frontier. It seems like yet again you Denwits have flown my ship headlong into an infested region. That is the third time this week, six million forms of communication and I'm yet to find one that can articulate how moronic you fools are. Computer power up the weapons and shield emitters, the doctor is in. This is the first part of the tutorial and we find ourselves immediately in a fight. So the controls are WASD and we fire the mouse with the left mouse button and we can zoom with the right one to get a better view of our target. We can also boost our engines on the left shift or brake on X. See, seems that we're getting a little bit overwhelmed here. Almost flying into that big tentacle or whatever that is. 
and say that they start out the tutorial with a, a big bang. So you just got that one. <clears throat> Get the little guy there. So the story campaign. That initial battle is just a way for the game to assess if you have the correct difficulty setting. I would suggest otherwise if you don't do too well in the battle. But we'll continue playing on normal. Now your starship is modular, so you can actually disattach stuff on the CTL here. If you press that down and hold it. And then you can attach other stuff. And you can buy better modules and equipment. I didn't actually want to put it there. Off of the uh, space stations in the game and expand your ship. So now I'll put it back together here. And we can also zoom in and out. How you assemble your ship will uh, affect its attributes and its weapons and all of that kind of stuff. So if you put too much engine on the ship or make it too big, it might turn badly. And too much engine might take too much power from other systems to the engines. So we still have one open port where apparently I did not attach correctly the module. There we go. So there are two camera modes in the game. You can press C and it'll come out here. So Carl has some advice for us. Our Omni Lithium Capacitor is now tapped out. I've devised a method to simply eject the spent cell while fabricating a new one. Our surrounding space dust. Do not ask me how it works or why it makes sense. All that you need to know is that you will be unable to fire the ship's weapons while the new cell is being restored. And this is sort of a reload function. You can press the R key. So now we are effectively reloading, but we cannot fire the guns. Let's take a look at space while we do this. And we go to the other view. Alright, I'm bringing the weapons online. If that is indeed what you want to call this garbage, let's blast open some of these containers. Maybe we can find something to eat that won't make our hair fall out. So now we have the engines online. And this is the overhead view. Let's go back into the sort of 3D view. And we can turn around to the left and right, but we can't go up and down. So we're sort of stuck on a 2D pane. So now we have to shoot the crates. And then we can track the stuff that is dropped. And the tractor beam will operate automatically. Ship computer, please assimilate and perform the following diagnostic tests on kinetic shield system. Your life and you my whole may depend upon it. Shield have their own power system, but they can be boosted with capacity power. If shields are boosted, they take half damage and generate twice as fast, but you are unable to shoot. So yeah, so now we have the tutorial for the shield boosts. And if you press space, we'll boost the shields. And on the left shift, we can boost the engines. If you press tab, we go to the tactical map. The most important thing here is the time moves only when you move. Take a look at the map here. Starting in the first sector, uh, it's a fairly big map. Now when you start the uh, campaign, that also acts as a tutorial, you will have these guiding objectives. And the first one is read this and it has some general tips about the ship's functions and so forth. And also this goal that we need to explore. And we can move to this objective. I'll do that now. So we'll explore the next sector. So now time moves and we spend rest for moving. All right, we're mobile. If you're all thoroughly satisfied, we can finally get on with it. We uh, still have stickies out there, not to mention a laundry list of equipment we need before we can do anything about them. Time is of the essence and we've wasted so much already. As anxious as I am to find a so-called sticky, we have not encountered one for many cycles. The ship does not yet have a nacelle to stand on, but therefore we need to scout more easy opportunities to exploit.
Now this is a starbase location, but we need to unlock the ability to actually build a starbase, but then we could make our home here, and then we could own this little uh, pocket of the universe here with the resources in it. So now the game wants us to explore further, but let's just check out this wreckage here. We can uh, gather something from it. And it has a few tips again. Loot the wrecks of war to find various supplies. Searching a wreck takes time. You may have to search the wreck several times to extract the, extract the loot. So we'll scavenge this one. And as a result, when there's been a fight, you can pick up the loot there. We can also steal stuff from uh, what is owned by other star stations. Here we could pick up some rest, but we can see there's only one point in it, so it'll ha hold less than what we could get somewhere else. And we can see this one is already being attended. So it might be worthwhile just uh, skipping over here and grabbing that. And we'll ransack that and steal uh, 76. And the different notes that you find are all either res, goons, which is uh, the people responsible for running your ship. And we need at least 60 goons to be operational. And if you have more than that, you can either sell them or just hold on to them in case you lose some goons in a battle. And then uh, scrap, which is sort of the currency in the game. And I think this is core modules so that we have free. So for now, let's sit over here, because that's a lore note, and it'll tell us about the game. The history of the universe. Find lore to learn more about the universe itself. Every lore point you can scan will have goodies. So it'll also grant us some, uh, some res, which effectively acts as fuel, and some uh, scrap. Scan and view. anti potty mouth initiative <laughs> and these are all uh, sort of little law background stories so we'll read this one human history is riddled with examples of recurring themes throwbacks revolutions and revelations and one such recurrence is the use of colorful metaphors to heighten one's emotional resonance while it had been commonplace for even kindergarten children to swear and curse for nearly a millennia it has recently become taboo the anti potty mouth initiative is a communal funded program aimed at refining the human language while increasing speaking efficiency by removing filler slang. The initiative overall has been very successful, while the proposed Gorn Violence Reduction Program has not received a single vote. The Friends Don't Shoot Friends in the Face program is not even expected to make it to the voting phase. So you can see from this little piece of law that the game doesn't take itself all that seriously. It's a humorous game, anti potty mouth initiative. And this is the uh, Turbo Storyteller 9000, not recommended for children. And these are all law points that we have not opened up that we can read if you find them. And you can uh, rewatch the intro, which is basically also just some text and some nice backgrounds telling you uh, the, the premise of the game and the story. So let's just steal a bunch of coons down here, even though this is not a claimed system. So we will not upset anyone when we steal them. Just ransack for 10 coons. So now we have 70. So we could sell 10 and still be operational. So now we'll do as the game says. We'll uh, move to the next objective and explore some more space. Okay, I'm calling it. We need to shift our focus back to more pressing needs. Everyone on board is expected to understand that the mothership takes priority over everything, including our very lives. To that effect, mother needs to be fed. We can't find what she needs. We die along with her. If we cannot trade for what we need, we'll have to take it by force. As cruel as it is, that's just life. So we need to find some basic resource nodes. Blowing up the mothership is not advisable. And that's basically what we've been doing a little bit. So now we're just trying to dock with the first star base. And again, you have all of these tips for how to do it and what it does. But we docked up here and we can see the star base owner, who is Jerry. And there's 200 captains, I think, in the game. And they all have custom portraits and uh, bios and stuff like that. So you can see the threat level is 46 and we are like... And our threat level is 5, so probably not be a good idea to attack it. 
You can also see the markup and that's the added price that we have to pay to buy here. And it can be uh, better or worse depending on the relationship with that faction or owner. So we have some options. We can fight the star base and we're not going to do that. Then we have the arena, which is a simulation combat thing where you can gain some easy scrap by beating uh, other simulated ships. You don't actually take damage to your mothership from doing this. So it's sort of a mini game where you can make some money. And then you can trade with the station or you can visit the junkyard where you can always get new modules that are great junk <laughs> in case you lose some and don't have money to buy a decent modules or you can repair the ship but we are not damaged let's take a look at the trade screen so here again we get all of these tips on trading so this is our current bank balance we have 288 scrap and these are all of the parts that we currently have equipped on our ship. All junk parts. When we progress a little bit further into the game, we can buy stuff here. Like better subcores, noses and engines and wings and stuff like that. So for now, let's just sell 10 goons. So then we are still operational and we'll get 31 scrap for that. Close down the trade window again. And before we head out in search of scrap res and goons again, let's just interact with Starbase and we'll do this uh, arena fight, the first one. Arenas can be found on all Starbases. Winning in the arena will earn you experience and scrap. Your real ship will not be harmed. And we start here at, at cadet level zero. So let's get started, loading arena program. So this is a way to also practice your fighting ability a little bit without actually losing the mothership. So you get an idea of how the mechanics of fighting work in the game. Just hit it from afar. So now it's close enough to be shooting at us as well. So let's try boosting our shields a little bit here. So we took it out there, winning the first fight. We'll enter the tactical tab, go back to a star map. So we earned a little bit of scrap, not much. Let's grab this law point. We'll scan and view. The dark entity, one out of three. It is impossible to say for sure where the dark entity came from. Some believe it existed before time itself. Others believe it is responsible for maintaining the precarious cosmological constant through its will alone. Regardless, it is now known that the resource risk stems entirely from this creature. While the entity cannot normally be physically observed, it does have a direct effect on the universe around it. Flooding space with risk. A function of res serves to attract technologically advanced species toward the creature where they can be corrupted by the dark infection. So what happens to this universe at some point is that it will be infected and we'll get a space zombie invasion and we have to fend it off. But before that we hope to have developed into a giant mothership and have bases all around in our own little faction. So we're searching for scrap resin goons and we can see that there's not a lot on any of these nodes here. So let's try and explore further out in space. I'm gonna head over here first. There's a bunch of goons there, let's grab those. So we ransack that, gain 9. And we leveled up, so now we get to select a perk, which is a little bit of an RPG element to the game. So we get a free perk, part size increase, so now we can uh, change some of the junk parts for better parts of stations, or find them. So we can choose between scavenging plus 10%, reactor increases reload speed, 
plus 15% on weapon damage, plus 15%, and I think these are random because I think I got a different layout of these first time I leveled up last time I played the game. So let's get scavenging because we're out scavenging for more resources. We need to find scrap. And in order to just complete these objectives fairly quickly and not actually find the most optimal nodes to mine, we'll just hit away and grab them. Because after that we'll get a different tutorial objective. And I think that's uh, improving the ship. So let's ransack here for now. And we'll hit away and grab the uh, rest objective. Get some more fuel. Get 48 there. So that completed those objectives. So there's a lot of goons down here, let's just grab them. So now Jamison has a, a tutorial tip that we should buy strike craft to assist our mothership in combat and we'll do that shortly. We'll just grab these goons and then we'll head over to a station. Ah, we just got blocked there. Someone else made it over there first, so now we can't actually mine that station. Or ransack it if you want to use the game terminology. Let's head to the star base. And we'll enter the trade screen. So now we have uh, all of these better parts available that we can buy for scrap. And put on our ship. And we also have strike craft down here. At this station we have two kinds available. The ranger and the triclave. And they are different. The ranger... Uh, is equipped with a variety of launchers and a weak cannon, but the Triclave is also available at a much lower cost. Totally dedicated missile carriers. Let's get the Ranger. And we can have uh, two strike craft out at uh, any given time right now with the ship that we have. So we should buy this if we can. And I think we can if we sell some goons. And we know we need only 60 to keep our ship moving. So we can sell 30 and that will net us 93 scrap. So now we should have enough to buy the triclave also. We'll trade for that. Oh, for Gamma's sake, why did you drop out of warp car? What is wrong with my ship? Nothing is wrong with the ship, Elsa. I've scheduled a combat drill for today. We are getting a little too soft for my liking. Jamieson is free in the morning. So we can skip to the next ship by pressing F. So if we control this ship, the AI will control the other ships automatically. And then we can designate a target to attack by pressing E. Target lost. And we can designate a target to defend if we want. And we can do that by selecting our own ship and pressing E. There's a cloud of something there, with some explosions, we don't want to hit in there. Um, and we can move too, also we can set a waypoint over here. Move the fleet over there. Jameson, alright, that's not bad, not great, not bad. Let's try something a bit bigger. So now we need to target an asteroid, we'll do that there. So now the fleet's attacking the asteroid. So let's send out some missiles. We have sufficiently asserted ourselves over this inanimate material. Surely we uh, must be done with these mindless examinations of competence by now. Carl, you couldn't fight your way out of a wet paper bag. So this finishes this little tutorial. Go back to the tactile map on tap. You see, we gained some experience as well. Now we're actually missing one goon, so we should head down and get some more. So let's head over here and grab this story point. So we get a little bit of history of Admiral Jameson. One of our crew members. For over 30 years, Jameson has served as a high-level commander of the UTA. He fought in over 200 engagements during the lockdown wars, three of which were successful. Jameson earned a great deal of recognition after tracking the renegade Don Gibson during the breach incident. Jameson single-handedly frauded the infectious outbreak following the breach, 
later earning him a galactic medal of amazing. <laughs> he is a prime example of a perfect human being. Alert 5% chance of file tampering detected. Yeah. He put that in there himself. Let's explore this area of space. Now that we have strikecraft of our own, we should learn about how to fight against them. It's a big galaxy and we are not original thinkers here. We should be able to locate a border raid to have a way with it. They should be no match for the combined force of our mothership and strikecraft. And has some tips about raids here. We have a raid over here. So we'll intercept that. Intercepting a raid will uh, improve your relations with the one you help and decrease it with the one you intercept. It'll also grant you some resources. But we'll have to fight the strike craft here. So let's head in the mission. So we can enter battle wagon mode now. If we press 1. And that means that uh, all of our guns and ships will fire on their own accord. But we can override it immediately by just firing with the mouse, which I just did there. See if we can take out this guy from the distance. Ah, we, they just took out our shields. Let's boost the shields. Alright, we've graduated from inanimate material to ships. A tenth of our size. It's, it's a baby step, but I'll take what I can get from this bunch. Are we done burning bugs with a magnifying glass? Good, okay, let's carry on. Second start to the left. Let's head back to the star map here. And now we can see that our strike craft took damage. One was actually completely destroyed. The triclave. But we can fix it. But the ranger was only uh, damaged, so we can fix all of our strike craft here. I'm pressing max fix, or we could, if we had less scrap, we can fix only one. But now they're both back to full operation. All right, guys, we're just getting into the game. There's a lot more stuff to cover. We'll continue in the next video. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you all next time.